Let's talk about Morbius. All right, let's let's talk about Morbius's opening weekend at the box office, okay? Because this is one that I think a lot of people out there uh, need to remember is, is a thing. So uh, Morbius opening weekend at the box office happened, and a lot of people out there have been questioning uh, how it did the the money that it did. So uh, showing us here that Morbius was in fact number one with thirty nine million dollars. Uh, you know, it had been est roughly estimated around 40 million. Some people thought as high as 50 million. It was, I think the biggest thing with Morbius is if they would have, if they would have like added in the uh, actual Spider-Man references, I think it would have done 50 to 75 million easily. If Spider-Man references would have been prominent and, and there would have been some tie into the greater Spider-Man universe, like other than those terrible and credit scenes that leaked out the other day. I think it would have done a lot better. I really, really, really do. The problem, though, is that like even the director at this point is kind of throwing Sony under the bus. When the director talked about how that whole Spider-Man 3 murderer little thing was added in there, that was Sony adding that in, and he didn't do that, and he doesn't know why they did that. It just shows me that Daniel Espinosa is like, I got I to gotta distance myself from Sony a little bit here because they're screwing their own brand. All right. This is that they're absolutely screwing their own brand. Uh, not only that, but look at this here. Right. So so the tomato meter of this shows us that it did 17 uh, percent based on 190 different reviews. However, the audience score with over twenty five hundred verified ratings. So people who actually purchase tickets have given the movie a positive, a fresh rating of 70 percent. Now, that is really interesting to me. That's super interesting because, again, even in, even in my own little sphere of people, I haven't seen it yet, but in my own sphere of people who have seen it, it's been a mixed bag. Some have loved it. Some have hated it. Some have been okay with it. But really, it's like this kind of this weird, eclectic, mixed bag of, of, of just what the F. So that's been one of those weird things. But see, here's the thing. 70% of people liked it, and yet... It only got a C plus cinema score. I mean, you figure if if 70% of people would have liked it, I mean, well, okay, if we're grading it on an A to F rating, 70% is roughly a C, but that it doesn't really translate the same here. It would have at least been like a B or B minus, I think. But it seems that audiences really didn't care for this. Now, and the reason why I say that, right, the reason why I say that has a lot to do with the fact that when you think about this, right, when you think about this movie, that C plus cinema score is probably because of that Spider-Man lie, right? That Spider-Man lie that they told us way back in the beginning of 2021 when that trailer first dropped, right? Or was it 2020 when that trailer first dropped? I don't remember entirely. But what I mean by this is like, look, they, they tease Spider-Man. That was a big deal. You know, Venom made a lot more money because of that Spider-Man connection and then immediately took it back. It pulled the carpet out from underneath the fans in one of the worst, most egregious, total Amy Pascal, Avi Arad, Tom Rothman ways. And people out there are really, really, really questioning a lot. They're like, they're like I don't get it. Like, why? Why is it? Why is this thing happening like this? Uh, why is Sony uh, still continuously doing uh, what Sony does? And it's like, well, again, it's kind of I'm. I, trying to think of the best way to describe it here, right? I'm trying to think of the best way to describe why exactly things are how they are with this. Like why you think after Spider-Man No Way Home and after everything else, they, you figure it would have gotten better. It would have been grander. They would have been greater. They would have understand it, understood it better. Well, I put this tweet out today and this is 100% true. If you're asking yourself why Sony is stuck in the early 2000s in regards to its superhero movies, look at who's running the studio. It's the same asshole who was running Fox during that time, which is Tom Rothman. Now, Tom Rothman is the kind of guy who, you know, is just like he's a penny pincher. That's kind of why he was brought in. Tom Rothman. See, someone said to me on Twitter today, they go, oh, but Tom Rothman gave us X-Men and X-Men 2. Not really. Tom Rothman came into Fox in 2000. X-Men was already in post-production at that time or it really gearing up to come out. So he had nothing to do with that. And then as for greenlighting X-Men 2, given how much money and, and praise the first one got, it was just an honest, you know, an obvious thing. But what came after that? 
All right, you have Daredevil, Elektra, you know, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four Rise of Sofa Surfer. I mean, that there was X-Men 3, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, you know, I mean, like I can start to kind of pull out a list here of like a midground of of Fox, you know, Marvel movies that were kind of this weird, weird thing. It was this weird world and it felt reactive, but it wasn't innovative, whereas it was with the first two X-Men movies. And then that's one of those whole things. And then Tom Rothman was forced out. He was literally forced out of the studio in 2012. Notice how X-Men movies suddenly got better post 2012, right? Kind of ever notice how Days of Future Past came out in 2014 and it was like, Kind of a recall back to the original, but then of course we have X Men Apocalypse, which we don't talk about X Men Apocalypse because, into many people, that uh, that that thing doesn't simply doesn't simply exist in many instances. All right. However, uh, again, this movie this movie is a problem, but it goes on because there's even it, it speaks to the larger issue going on at Sony, and there is a tweet that came out from Variety uh, earlier today. It says here, Sydney Sweeney is reading the, all the Madam Web comic books to prepare for her role, saying, I've always been a really big fan of the Marvel and Sony Universe movies. I've grown up watching them all, and I've been engulfed in the entire world my entire life. All right. So so you have that, right? You've got, uh, you've got that. Now, hold on here. Dark Scipio brings up Dark Phoenix. Now, I do blame uh, Simon Kinberg for Dark Phoenix, although I do feel Dark Phoenix was a better movie than X-Men Apocalypse. So, but Simon Kinberg was a big problem, was a big problem there. Anyway, so Sydney Sweeney here, cause they're doing the Madam Web movie, right? Oh yeah. Right. So who is, who is directing the Madam Web movie? Well, according, uh, to, uh, this, this eagle eye person here, uh, uh, XR Bishop, she says that, uh, Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless are the same writers of Morbius. They have been hired to write the Madam Web film. They also wrote Gods of Egypt, The Last Witch Hunter, Dracula Untold, and 2017's Power Rangers. On top of that, the films didn't even make a profit for the studio. Now, there is not specifically, like, you cannot put all of the blame on them, all right? Like, you, you cannot put uh, all of the blame on them entirely. What that effectively means is that like, you know, clearly there have been problems here. Like Gods of Egypt was, was shit. The last Winch Hunter, I, you know, I haven't seen it, but as Breck Eisner as a director, it can't be all bad. Uh, Breck Eisner did Sahara in 05 and the crazies in 2010. I absolutely adore both of those films. I need to watch the last Witch Hunter. Dracula untold wasn't terrible, but universal tried to shoehorn it into the dark universe at the time. And I think it just kind of fucked it up. 2017's Power Rangers was fun campy but fun either way though these are not the kind of people that um that you would i think really kind of like you know um go to and they might need better writers at this particular point and i think i really do i really feel like that is something uh that's going to uh maybe help everything however you know what there there was a person out there who really enjoyed morbius and uh and, and decided to put it on review and i just wanted to touch upon this for a second because when you, when you title it things like this, this is why we can't have nice things. So uh, obviously Midnight's Edge put out a review saying Morbius not that bad and not at all woke. What about this movie would be considered fucking woke? What, what about this movie would be considered anything that would need to be woke? I mean, it's a movie about a white guy who becomes a half vampire and fights other white people who are also vampires, I guess. I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm just kind of speculating. In the end, you know, uh, we meet another another white guy villain. So I, what about this movie would be considered woke outside, outside of the concept that maybe, you know, I don't know, just maybe an idea here uh, that, uh, you know, anything that might have a female agenda is going to be considered woke. What does that mean? You know, what is, what does Andre from Midnight Sedge mean by this? It's just, it's mid, yeah, Christopher Barker is right. It's Midnight's cringe. Absolutely. That's what it is. It's just Midnight's cringe. That's all it is. Because you have to ask yourself, like, what is the, what is the point of saying this? Now, this is clickbait for the most part, but it's, but this is how they operate. Uh, that dude Vince here says, I enjoyed Morbius and nothing was woke. LOL. Yeah, I know. 
These are people who I don't know if they understand what a vagina looks like. Uh, Lord Slicker says vampires are now woke. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, where were they back in 2008 to 2012 with the Twilight franchise? Jesus. Uh, Anthony here brings up a point. Says, uh, Deadline said that Morbius cost $83 million because of COVID. Yeah, no, no. Morbius is going to turn a profit for the studio. All right. So, uh, so there's that. Like, it's going to turn a profit obviously but what i mean at the same time is like they could have done better you know like like venom and venom 2 could have been better told stories they were fun enough movies but they were kind of harkening back from a time when like you know those were the, the we we expect more now 